Okay, welcome to my first of uh, hopefully many Final Cut 10.1 tutorials. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna take a Final Cut 10.0 uh, project, and I'm calling anything 10.0 that was you know 10.01 through 10.09, and we're gonna upgrade it to a Final Cut 10.1 project. Now I've already installed the uh, the application, and I recommend that you go and you um, go get the Ripple training stuff because it's really good. But I just want to show you some particulars about how I do this. So um, Final Cut will always have one library open. And what I've done is I've started a library and I've put it on my home drive. It's actually stored in the, by default, it goes to the movies folder, but you can put it any place. And I call this my template library. And in here is a, what I call a starter kit, an event starter kit. And it has um, four folders here with um, all of the um, sort of pre-built keywords that we use all the time okay and so when you start a new event you can just take those four folders and drag them into a new event you'll have a bunch of keywords already started for you okay uh at this point i am going to quit final cut because it launches so fast i'm going to take you on a little tour here so up here in the corner of my computer i have uh well i have you know my system drive and a pegasus that i tend to work off and we also have a a big let's see um I call it a backup drive. It's basically, I call it caveman backup. I just throw stuff on there that I want to have a second copy of just in case. And um, then I have a little work drive here. So when I open up the work drive, you can see I have a bunch of sparse disks. Now in Final Cut 10.0, uh, a very commonly used method, although not everybody used it, was sparse disks. And when we have, um, what we have is we have each job on a sparse disk. Now with 10.1, we're not going to need to do that. The reason we're not going to be able to, we're not going to need to do that. We could do that if we want. The reason we're not going to need to do that is we have the, these project libraries now, which are much better, much, much better. So um, here I have a sparse disk, a little demo sparse disk. And uh, about uh, February of 2013, I went up to uh, the Twit Brick House and walked around with a camera. Thank you, Leo, for letting me walk around with the camera and take some pictures. So when I open up this guy, you can see here's my sparse disk. Now, in each sparse disk that we have around our office, we have a job folder. And if I twirl this down, you can kind of see the Fenwick job folder layout that I always use. And then there's a Final Cut Events folder. And in that is the all of the stuff for that event, for my old event, and the projects folder, which was all of the projects or timelines or sequences and all of the stuff that's needed to build that up. Now these two folders, I want you to watch these because these are the ones that Final Cut 10.1 is going to modify. And essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all of the contents of those two folders and it's gonna fold it into the project library. Are we calling it a project library? I'm gonna call it a project library. Okay, it's not really, it's an event library. I don't know what they call it, but it's basically the library that you choose to put stuff into. Now, I'm going to launch the Final Cut 10.1 again. You'll see it's going to, it, it actually goes really quickly. Boom. Now, I have my starter kit, and you're thinking, well, I've I got that drive sitting there. How come it didn't launch? Well, the reason it didn't is Final Cut 10.1 does not launch projects like Final Cut 10.0 did. So when I come out here, I realize I want to I want to get at this project. So how do I do that? Well, in 10.1, this is what you do. You go to file and you go update projects and events. Now, first thing it's going to do is it's going to give you this window. Now, there's this update all button and that just scares me. Basically, what that's going to do is it's going to look for all events and all projects on all mounted drives and it's going to go to town on it. Fundamentally, I just don't want a computer to take over that much control of my workspace and do too much without me being able to interject. I don't know, maybe I've watched too many of the Terminator movies, but I just don't feel comfortable with that. So instead, I'm going to do locate. And basically what it does is, and I think it goes to this folder because I've already been here practicing, it goes to the same folder that we were just looking at. But look at it. Here's the Fenwick job folder, right? And I twirl that down and there's all the stuff like I've always done. I'm going to close that. And then it has these two folders that are kind of grayed out. And those are the two that I just pointed out. Now, essentially what Final Cut is telling me is it's going to take those two folders and it's going to go to town on them. Now, here's what it does. When I click update, it's going to think about this. And this is a small project. It's only about two, two gigs. So it takes a few seconds and it goes boom, boom, and done. Now, this little dialog box, I got to tell you, it scares me. Do you want to move the old projects and events to the trash? Well, no, I don't want to do that. That sounds really bad, except for this. It is, it's talking about the old projects and events. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go take a look. Before we do anything, let's take a look together. So now our folder looks different here. 
There's the Fenwick job folder that I always talk about. And look at this. Here's a folder. It says, uh, actually, let's make this a little wider so we can see what it says. It says, Twit Brickhouse, old, old Final Cut projects and events. Huh, what's in there? Well, look at that. It's, it's my two folders. Now, in olden times, you'd say, well, there's no way I want to throw those away. But here's the deal. What Final Cut has done is it's taken the contents that it needs from there, and it's put it into here the Twit Brick House. Now this is the, the new library that you hear everybody talking about. This is, what, this is how you get access to your stuff. Now normally back here, this move to trash, I would say, no, I'm not gonna let you do that. I wanna tell you, I've practiced this, I've done this, I'm feeling pretty confident with it. So when I hit move to trash, here it's opened up my project. Now let's go back here, oh, it's moved it to trash. So that stuff is actually in the trash. But the contents, the stuff that was important, is actually stored in this library file. So now that this is open, you can see it's, it's done its import, rather. What do we have here? So now we have two libraries. We have the, the temp library that I showed you earlier. And then we have the Twit Brickhouse library. And when I twirl that down, you can see I have two events in there. I have updated projects. It's twirled down, but there's nothing in it. And then we go event twit brick house. Okay, when I twirl that down, I can see, look at my folders. Now you notice there's one less folder. And the reason there's one less folder is that in this is a little bit older. Let's twirl this down. You can see I have a zero, zero sequences. Well, one, two, three, but I don't have a zero, zero. Well, now the reason I have the sequences is in 10.0, I was doing stuff in compound clips. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. I think I'm gonna be using projects. But where is my project? Can when, you, when you come down here, you don't get the little open up the project pane. And this is twirled down. Now, I got to tell you, here's a total gotcha. When I first did this, I panicked. I'm like, uh, oh, it's lost the project. This is twirled down. It's not showing. Well, here's a, here's a little gotcha. Click on it. Ah, heavy sigh of relief. Here's my missing project, okay? Now, a couple things about the project. It doesn't skim like olden times. I wish it did, but whatever, it doesn't. And now what I want to do is I want to move it out of this event into this event. Now it put it there because it just doesn't know where to put it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a new smart, a, a new folder. Okay, new folder. And I'm going to call that folder. Select it. I'm going to go zero, zero. And I'm going to type in sequences. Puts it at the top of the list. I like it being there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new smart collection. And I'm going to call it. Um, all. I'm probably going to change that, but for now we're going to call it all. Now it is a smart collection, which means I have to program the smart collection. So if I double click on that, I come down here and I say, I want this type to be projects. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So even though Final Cut calls them projects and I think it's a stupid name, I'm just going to call them sequences and in here is all of them. So now when I click on projects, I click on this guy, I bring it and I drop it into this event. Okay. Now you notice I can't drop it here. I can't drop it in the folder. I can't drop it on the smart collection. I can't, in, even if I tried to drop it on one of these keywords, it doesn't take, it's weird. But if I drop it onto the event library, drop it right there. Now, when I click on all, there it is. What that basically means is I could delete this event project. Oh, actually, look at that. It's actually not in there anymore. So yeah, I'm gonna just go boom, move event to trash, and now I have successfully updated my project from a 10.0 to a 10.1. Now at this point, the next step is to clean one more thing out at the finder. So I'm gonna quit Final Cut, and when we come out here, you see I have the project library or the event library, the library outside of the job folder. Here's the job folder. The last thing I want to show you is that the way we're going to do it around our office is we're going to take that library and we're going to put it right inside the job folder. So now I have one folder and this doesn't need to retain, remain in a sparse disk. I can actually copy this onto a RAID that everybody has access to. But when I open that up, there's my library or, or excuse me, there's my library. There's all my other assets. And when I double click on this guy, it is now going to launch Final Cut 10.1. There's 10.1 and there's Final Cut. 
and there's my project. It actually automatically linked to all those things. So I was a little worried about moving the location of that library, but as it turns out, it works just fine. So that's, uh, that's the process of taking a 10.0.x project and moving it into a 10.1 uh, realm. Later, later.